Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. We're joined today in the unit with, of course, my Mark 7 Golf R. Now this car hasn't really featured on the channel too much over the recent months, purely because it's been winter time here in the UK, the roads have been awful, and therefore this car hasn't generally been used that much because it is primarily a track car. Today, we're gonna to be getting back on the tools and actually doing some pretty drastic changes and upgrades to this car, mainly to do with cooling. Now this car, up until recently, did suffer quite a lot with cooling. Uh, I have now fitted uh, the Iobed baffled sump to the car, courtesy of custom bag parts, which has made a huge difference. Now, I know there was some chatter in that video about how cold the car now runs. It was filmed on a very cold day. This car doesn't get used that much in winter. And to be honest, when it's 30 degrees plus, that is when that kind of thing will come into its own. Now today we're gonna to be doing some other cooling modifications, which I will dive into very shortly. But before we do crack on, I would like to say a few words for the sponsor of today's video, which is of course, OBD11. OBD11 is a super handy OBD reader tool absolutely tiny so super portable and something which I bring with me everywhere I go with this thing whether I'm doing a track day uh, or even a road trip. To connect it it's super simple all you've got to do is plug it into your OBD port which on my car is just down here a little bit tricky with the roll cage and once that's connected you then connect via Bluetooth to the app on your phone. Connecting to the app only takes a couple of seconds and you also need to have your ignition on on the car. Uh, but as you can see, on screen we are now all set. The first thing naturally we can do is actually do a scan. And this is gonna scan through everything um, in the car, all the computers and scan for any fault codes. Now on this car, I know that there are quite a few fault codes, things like the airbags um, and multimedia system because it's all disconnected mainly uh, on this car thanks to the cage and everything going on in here. This, as you can see, is scanning through 17 different ECUs on the car, currently going through the adaptive cruise control um, and we can see we found eight faults so far. There we are, 43 faults found on the car. Now, if you actually want to go in and see what they are, just click that. You can see that, for example, we've got uh, something going wrong with the air conditioning, two faults in there, lower vent temperature sensor uh, left and right. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and then yeah, air bag, uh, driver door. Oh yeah, that makes sense. The loom's taken out of that door. <laughs> Yeah, motor for the window regulator. That's all missing on this car. Um, but yeah, if you get a warning light on the dash, which is, which is something uh, untoward, you pull up, plug this in, within a couple of minutes, you can check it, see what it is. Uh, and ultimately, you can swipe up and clear all the faults and then see what happens from there. There we are. But that is not all with OBD11. If we click over to the app section, we can see we can do a ton of different coding um, possibilities on the car. If we scroll down, you can see just some of those. For example, if you want to retrofit some stuff, uh, like for example, I think there's something about the tow bar, you can retrofit a tow bar. Um, you can also do the coding for that. Um, if you put in the uh, facelift tail lights, for example. Also, if you're doing some service work on your own, uh, you can obviously change uh, the service soon warning so you can reset the dash. You can do various lock tests and light tests, that kind of thing. So super handy uh, if you're doing some work to your own car. You can even do things like release the rear handbrake to do the rear brake pads. That's something you need to do on the modern cars and just a ton of tests, which is super handy to do. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back into adjustments because there is something I think would be interesting to do on this, and that is just a battery charge level. Now, basically on this car, there's nothing to really um, show that the battery is a certain amount of charge. This is something which you can flick through uh, on here, which would be really handy. So you can see it's currently off. Turn this on, activate it, that'll do its stuff and then we'll have it on the screen which is great there we go done simple as that so that is the obd11 as i said something which i bring everywhere with me super portable just places it into the little box just here um, yeah super handy device and something which uh, I've used a lot on this car. Now, if you do want to check it out for yourself, then I do have a nice little discount code for you. Use code HP for 10% off, and all the details for OBD11 can be found in the description below. Again, a big thank you to OBD11 for sponsoring this video and being a huge supporter of mine on the channel. 
genuinely is an awesome bit of kit. But with that said, let's get back to the video and I have some pretty major things to do today. First task today is to whip off both front wheels. Now, the reason for that, nothing really going on suspension wise, uh, but I just need more accessibility because the front end needs to come off. Uh, something I've never actually done before. Uh, so that should be interesting. Use my nice little table that I've got. Everyone's favorite table. To give you a, a, a bit of a better idea of what my main aim is to do here. I want more airflow to go through the car and some of the Club Enduro cars and some of the TCR cars have a different front bumper setup. And by a different front bumper setup, what I actually mean is it's just been cut up basically. And <laughs> I can hear the comments already. Yes, that's what we're gonna be doing. So aim is to make this thing look a little bit different on the front end. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person in the UK running this setup with the bonnet and the wings. I know there's a couple in the UK running this bonnet, um, but with the bumper from the front, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but I think it could look a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more purposeful, which is what this car is all about. So to be honest, before I actually take the front bumper off, I'm going to take the plate off, take the towing eye off and actually kind of sketch out almost what I want to do and the aim here. And trust me, there's reasoning with the madness. Just wait and see. I now have my helper. This is Chumley. <laughs> I mean, there's no other real way of doing this. A ruler and a Sharpie. Right, let's do some art. All of this is good. <laughs> My parking sensors don't work. There's no loom for them. So these are completely redundant. That's why that is included with this area. Adaptive cruise control, that also doesn't work. The loom has been stripped on that. So that again is redundant. So more on that and more on this whole grill later. And these holes in the bumper are annoying anyway. So what better way to fix the holes in the bumper by making one giant hole which covers all of them. Just realize you probably can't actually see what I've just done. Yeah, this thing is gonna look really aggressive. And to be honest, there's not gonna be another Golf R which looks like this. You've probably seen some of the other uh, track cars in the UK which are running a, a similar front end setup, uh, but this one's gonna be a little bit different. So basically the aim is this kind of uh, factory line on the bumper, I'm just gonna carry on up here all the way along and match it on the other side. Yeah, that's gonna be, Pretty wild, isn't it, mate? It is, isn't it? Right, next step, probably get the bumper off, actually. Now that I know kind of where to, where to cut, and uh, we'll go from there. Bumper is now obviously off the car. Of course, we've got the line out of where um, we need to cut. Um, I've also taken out the main central front grille because that uh, is no longer needed. And I've also uh, taken out the adaptive cruise control uh, just down here. Well, to be honest, both the bolts sheared because they were completely seized. Um, that doesn't work anyway. And it, it's gonna be very obvious um, with it sat, sat there. So I may actually just cut off this whole bracket altogether. Um, but yeah, dog's excited for, uh, <laughs> for the dremeling. So we're all good, all set up to make a start on this. Dremeling is now complete. It's literally hanging on with a thread. Do you know, I, I can hear the comments of what people are gonna think of this, but do you know what? I don't care. Uh, this might need a tiny bit more. Look at that, look at the airflow. Oh, there we go. Ah, I need to disconnect the um, uh, parking sensor wires, but I know a quick way of doing that and it doesn't involve properly taking them out. Come on. There you go. 
Have you ever seen a golf R look like this? <laughs> Bit of tidying up to do, obviously, but that, yeah, that's actually gone surprisingly well. Uh, yeah, sod it. These are not the right scissors. <laughs> Is it too late to change my mind now I've cut the parking sensors in? Yeah, no, 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 I don't know, a little bit too late. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, there is still a lot of work which I need to do before this little project is complete in terms of the front bumper. However, I have loosely fit the bumper back on and also the kind of strip uh, panel above it and it looks mega. I mean, look at this. How menacing does that look? In fact, let's put the bonnet down as well so we can get a full idea of this. As I said, this is not done by any means. There will be um, mesh going over the front, which will protect everything under there. The bumper isn't fit back on, so it's not straight or anything like that. But <laughs> how mad does that look? That is crazy. Now, I don't think you've seen another Golf R that looks like that. That whole section <laughs> has all been removed. And yes, I know it's not exactly pretty behind here, and I know that that's not straight there. That's because it's fitted better there than it is here. So it is straight before you ask. Um, I'm gonna clean all this up in here because obviously this before was just hidden by the bumper. So this is actually just a nice black. And I've got um, black mesh to go over the front. Uh, there's a couple more bits that I need in terms of hardware to actually fit that in place. But I wanted to put this together just loosely so we can get a rough idea of what it's gonna look like. And yeah, that looks absolutely insane. Look at it. <laughs> anyway, I do need to get this back off now because there's actually a couple of other things that I need to do today uh, whilst we're on the subject of cooling modifications for the car. And actually tucked away behind here, again, I know the bumper is not situated correctly, is the factory OEM auxiliary cooler. That is pretty mangled and needs to go. So that is the next port of call. I'm hoping that this is gonna be pretty straightforward to take out because I think it's a very similar setup to what's on my S1, which is of course a job I've done before. I've taken off the um, air guide at the front and then it's gonna be rather messy because we're gonna take the two coolant lines uh, off from the top, one on each side. So I'm gonna give this a go. Now I do remember from when I did this on the S1 that it was not the nicest of jobs. There we go. Oh, brilliant. Lovely. I'll leave it a bit like that. So now we've got a bung at the top and I think two screws at the bottom and then the OEM unit shall be removed. Okay, so with a bit of persuasion, had to kind of um, loosen off the um, headlight to get out the uh, standard unit, which is here because uh, basically where the bottom of the headlight is, there's just no clearance at all there. But this is the upgraded unit. It's an AirTech auxiliary radiator. Looks pretty cool. That'll be pretty plug and play, I would have thought, straight on in there. We'll top up the coolant and everything, all the usual stuff. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward, I hope. Bit of progress to report on. We now have the auxiliary radiator from AirTech all uh, fitted up. Uh, I've topped up the coolant. Um, I haven't run the car yet though, so I'll probably have to do um, a little bit more bleeding through the system on that. But we do have a bit of progress uh, on some other bits because I was waiting for some bits to arrive in order to finish off the bumper. Now, this is very DIY. And to be honest, like I said earlier on in the video, <laughs> I know some of the comments are gonna be pretty savage with this, you know, judging by my wooden splitter. Um, but yeah, this is what we've got for uh, basically transforming the bumper on the car. I've um, got some mesh. This I got from B&Q, yep. You're gonna love that. Um, so that, it just comes in silver, annoyingly. Um, so I've just got some satin black spray paint, um, some mini uh, cable ties, and also some kind of grommet tape stuff. Um, that is what I need to then basically fabricate my new front grille. Now, I'm gonna emphasize this. Yes, this is very DIY. It's probably gonna look quite cowboy, but like I said, this car is all about functionality. And yes, it might not look that pretty, but 
it's going to work. I know it is because there are some genuine race cars out there, um, MQB race cars, which have something or a very similar setup to this. And that is exactly the same for the splitter. Go to a race day, you know, professional, but not, you know, top tier. So kind of time attack, um, club enduro, that kind of thing. There'll be wooden splitters everywhere because that's just what race cars use. It's not meant to look pretty because it's pointless having a carbon fiber piece which is gonna cost 2,000 pounds if it's just gonna get annihilated. Um, so yeah, that is why that is there. And that is why we're doing this. So first port of call is to actually fit this to the edge of the cut that I've made, just to tidy that up. Um, and then we'll get the mesh uh, cut to size, painted and put on. That's that in place. That came out pretty well. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering, this isn't dirt. These are all stone chips. <laughs> that is so bad, but so good at the same time. Right, on to the next thing. Some real good progress is being made. We can see that we've now painted uh, the grill. Uh, so that's now dried and I've now just drilled all the holes about two inches apart uh, for the mini cable ties, uh, which we have one of here. Um, yeah, I know it's a cable tie, but pfft, and <laughs> basic aim is to obviously feed the cable ties through the holes in the bumper uh, and then wrap them around to the nearest square, basically. Then my aim is to then cut down the mesh because I have done a little bit extra just so then I can um, account for any changes in uh, in the bumper and the space that's needed um, and then yeah we should be pretty much all good to go. Okay after a lot of cable ties a lot of swear words we're done I know it doesn't really look like it from here um, because it kind of blends in um, but yeah this thing is all completely done and ready to go back on the car, in comes the doggo. What do you think? Yeah, you like it? Right, oh God, my back's gone. Mm. Let's get this fitted back on the car. And then this little project will be all done. I'm so excited to see what this thing looks like. It's gonna look so mean. And yes, I am gonna be running a front plate, the same plate as before. Um, I'm just gonna mount it in a different place, but I'm yet to work out where that will be. You're getting needy, aren't you, doggo? Anyway, we'll get this fitted up and then we will see. Oh, brilliant. And then we'll see <laughs> the finished result. Where has that gone? Luckily, I can see exactly where it's gone due to my new mesh. So there we are, some pretty substantial changes to the front end of the Golf. Uh, I've never seen one look like this before. I think it looks absolutely insane. I've got a few other bits which I need to do, which I'll do off camera, bleed the coolant, fit the plate, that kind of thing. Um, and I do have some other things that I wanna to do to the front end, uh, like a new AC uh, condenser. Um, that's pretty mullered, so that I need to do. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I'm quite proud of myself uh, for doing all this, because. You know, I've, I've no idea what I was doing for the whole video, uh, the entirety of it. So, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm absolutely shattered. Um, if you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures still to come.